Hello, hello, and welcome, my Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your Twin Flame read for August, uh, September 2020, or Timeless, whenever you are supposed to uh, watch these contracts work that way. <clears throat> I'm your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, uh, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, son of a Cancerian mother, and glad to be in service for you today my subscribers welcome back thank you so much hope you're enjoying it you know i love reading for all the signs but cancerians in particular to give back to as a blessing to the moon children that have been uh, part of my life since jump that being said let's get down to business uh, if you are new to my channel please do consider liking subscribing helping me move forward on my youtube journey blah 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 you know the deal but I mean it, though, because I'm having a field day doing this and reaching out and making friends all over the world. Um, but we are looking at a general twin flame contract. Uh, timeless, as I said, August, September is kind of the two months that I'm shooting for here. Uh, to really look at uh, party number one, party number two, like a soul contract, uh, what is uh, what you need to know about what you are learning from a particular relationship in your life. A twin flame contract, like a soulmate contract, is a soul contract. There's a lot of legal language there. Uh, but the difference is a twin flame, you are teaching yourself how to love yourself, or the relationship is teaching you how to love yourself, how to set boundaries, how to grow, how to heal, how to give yourself the love that only you can, because the twin can't, uh, making you the soul mate, right? The mate of your own soul to heal, to learn, to grow and evolve, and therefore to be a better soul mate, which is more the satisfying uh, type. Remember, twin flames and soul mates, you may have many in one lifetime. Um, uh, but they tend to balance out and they're not all romantic sexual. So what we're shooting for is what is the most important contract you need to deal with. Could be family, could be work, could be romance, could be any of it. Uh, but it doesn't matter as you heal one, you heal all. Just the holographic nature of it. So uh, I'm going to tune to my guides. If you can remember, this is a general read. Take what resonates, leave what does not. Breathe in the present moment to feel out what's uh, working for you, what isn't, and I'll get you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can. All right, take a nice deep breath. All the decks that I read are in the description box below. We are gonna do Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine. Uh, has nothing to do with bodily gender. You take what resonates for you. Sometimes with twins, you can see yourself in both, and sometimes people use these readings to look at their own masculine, feminine balance and dynamic within themselves. It's all holographic, it's all good. Take what works, right? because uh, I'm going to ask my pantheons, uh, and we'll do this. We're going to start with the Caroline Mace Archetype deck. Here we go. Oh, exposition done. <laughs> There's the fun part. Mm, my collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved. Please, I need two cards. One for the Divine Feminine and one for the Divine Masculine. In this Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm Twin Flame Contract. We're looking at August, September here, both, both months, but really timeless whenever they're supposed to see it. We're talking archetypes here. Uh... A sun, moon, rising, Venus sign. Who's the divine feminine here? And who is the... Ooh, I felt that. Oh, give me a tingle. And who is our divine uh, masculine twin here? Not going to know who the Cancerian is. Could be either. Could be both. Now, remember, these cards might be triggery. We're looking at an archetypal power. Ooh. Of shadow and light, the toxic to the healthy, what you are learning to uh, heal uh, and love within yourself. Uh, we've got the divine feminine king archetype, which is very interesting because it's such a dominant masculine, divine masculine, feminine, uh, divine masculine family archetype. That was hard to say uh, for a divine feminine, but it's not unheard of because uh, we're not talking uh, physical gender here at all. And we've got the destroyer the Divine Masculine, which is certainly an archetype at play. Now, a king and a destroyer? Already, I think we see the stage being set a little bit here in terms of <clears throat> this could just right off the bat be family, right? Because the king is tribal power, could be the head of a family. Uh, the destroyer, though, someone who wants to uh, make way for the new, but uh, we'll go into these. For the Divine Feminine King, the shadow attribute, excessive feelings of entitlement, rulership without restraint. <laughs> mm. 
much. I mean, that's tricky. Now, I will say Cancerians are the king of cups for me. Uh, so in tarot, there is a bit of a, a, a correlation there, cardinal uh, water. Uh, the light attribute, enlightened benevolent leadership benefiting those in your charge, right? So it really is good king, bad king kind of deal. Uh, but in a divine feminine energy, that's an interesting thing. Uh, the divine masculine destroyer, the shadow attribute, intoxication with destructive power. <laughs> We've all been there one life or another. Uh, destroying others' dreams or potentials. That's fun to be around. Uh, or the light attribute, what's being sh uh, shooting for here, releasing what is potentially destructive, preparing for new life, right? And look at the times we're in. I mean, there's very revolutionary times here. So, I mean, even though there is a rebel revolutionary card that could have come up here, it's very different when the archetype is a destroyer, but, right, preparing for new life, uh, releasing what is potentially destructive. <laughs> What we're going to do uh, before uh, we go into the element spread, we're going to do five cards each, uh, two different decks for those two. I want to get who's the angel that's walking with you. Just uh, a Healing with the Angels Oracle card to kind of say, because twin flames are tricky, because you can't really turn to each other to really get what you need. You have to get that from yourself, from your own path, or from, you know, other people in your life, soulmates like friends and family, if it's the romantic thing you're struggling with. Um, but certainly your own spiritual path. So who's the angel? My angels, please, for this Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, who's the angel that walks with the king? Thank you. I'll be glad to put them face down. And the one who uh, walks with the destroyer archetype, the divine masculine, will take that one. Who we got here? All right, well, the king with dreams. Now, I have to say, this feels very Cancerian to me, not just... Uh, the aspirational part of a king that has dreams of things they want to create in the world. Um, but also the nocturnal aspect, the more psychic, deeper Cancerian part here. So I'm going to lean towards uh, the divine feminine kind of being more of the Cancerian here, although of course it can bop back and forth. Uh, but with the angel of abundance, is that's an interesting, because what would the angel of dreams do, right, for the king, right? It would uh, kind of tune you into your dreams, your aspirations, the things you dream about that you want to do in your life, as well as to look to the more psychic interior uh, side of stuff, the subconscious, pay attention to your dreams, that kind of sort of stuff. But for the angel of abundance with the destroyer, like, really, this could be, like, breaking down the old to make way for something that is just so much better. <clears throat> could be tricky, though. I, I mean, the Angel of Abundance, what would it do with, uh, with that sort of destructive energy? And you know here, it's a perfect example. It's a volcano exploding. Well, volcanic ash is incredibly fertile, and from it, from it comes, you know, like uh, the Hawaiian Islands, right? Just the volcanic islands in general, right? very, very fertile, very mineral rich, because that which was has been buried deep down below is revealed in a very destructive way. And remember, people might not like destructive energy, but, you know, you're glad your uh, stomach acids do what they do, <laughs> right? Otherwise, uh, it's going to be very, very hard to digest stuff. So there, uh, there you have it. Let's go to town. Um, what we're going to do to clarify this a little bit more, oh, by the way, there's going to be an extended, I've been doing extendeds for these, um, we're really just doing 18 cards here, if I could reach the other deck, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to do Fire, Earth, Air, Water, Spirit, Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine, we're going to be using Daughters of the Moon, for the Divine Feminine we are going to be using uh, the Mythic Tarot, same thing, I'm going to lay them out pretty much at the same time, then flip them element by element together, do take a minute, please take a nice deep breath. best part. <laughs> My goddesses, please. Can I get five cards? Oh, I saw a flipper in there. Hi. Ma'at was a flipper in there. Justice. Let's see. My goddesses, please. Can I have five cards? I'll call them out one at a time. Fire, earth, air, water, spirit for this divine feminine king archetype walking with the angels of dreams uh, in this Cancerian collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, twin flame contract, August, September 2020 or timeless. Here we go. Let's call them out. Fire, 
what does she want? I'm going to say fire, she, and he, right? Because just to keep it straight in my mind, divine feminine, divine masculine, please bear with me. It's not about bodily gender. I'll say it 10,000 times if necessary. What does she want? What is her element of earth? What does that, that, that female, that divine feminine king, that feels so good, energy want? Element of earth. She has what she wants, the earth to help her get what she wants. What is her element of air? What does she think about it? Here we go element she clear about that what she feels about it she's got that and what is the message of her soul most importantly the point of view the message of the soul who agreed to the contract in the first place <laughs> soul contracts there has to be some agreement on some deeper part we're down here in the game we don't know all that all the meetings that must have gone on to set this thing up breathe <laughs> As we turn now to uh, the gods, the divine masculine, the mythic tarot, same thing. My gods, please. Uh, five cards in clarity. Elements spread fire, earth, air, water, spirit. For this destroyer archetype, like this can feel, this feels almost very Zeus Hera with uh, Aries. <laughs> For some reason, like very parent child at the moment. Uh, please, one card. We'll call them out one at a time. Uh, fire. What does this destroyer archetype with the angel of abundance walking with them desire in this twin flame contract? Uh, what do they have the earth to get them what they want? There we go. What do they think? What are, what is the predominant thought? Mm, close, no cigar. What is the predominant thought. There are more than one thought about this. I get it. Uh, what is their predominant thought? Just leave one in the hand, please. Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 There we are. There we are. But see, but that says something that there's a lot of, there's a lot of thought going into this that there's, there's really, I could have thrown three cards. And when we clarify, when the extended, you'll, if you go to the extended, you'll see, go check them out. They're cool. I'm enjoying them. Uh, element of water. What is this uh, destroyer really feeling? Oh, we'll take that one. The destroyer. There's something volatile. Well, it's a destroyer archetype. I guess the volatility is understandable there. But most importantly, please, my gods, the voice of the soul that agreed to the contract in the first place for this uh, uh, Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Twin Flame contract. <laughs> Uh, August, September, or timeless 2020, 2020, what do you both want? Oh, well, okay. So for the Divine Feminine King to want the Five of Cups, I think we're looking in terms of an element of fire of a change of emotion, because why would somebody want the storm? Although storms do clear the air, and kings, really, king archetypes usually don't have a problem declaring what it is that they want, but be careful excessive feelings of entitlement, rulership without restraint, it's very Zeus, just saying. So Zeus energy in a divine feminine could be very, very earthquakey, almost like Poseidon, but, but we'll go with Zeus on that. So I would think really the more, um, the more upbeat part of this is to really just say what this this one wants is to kind of weather the storm. Let's just get through this. Let's let's deal with what has to be uh, dealt with here. And what the divine masculine destroyer wants right now is the hanged man. Is in a sense uh, a time to pull back, to chill, to see things differently. Um, I always get that ha wait on the will of the divine to happen, but it feels like if there is a storm going on here that there seems to be a desire to, to, I don't know about reversal of position, if these two are in opposition, it feels like if this got political, like that's a way that that could play itself out. Two different sides of the aisle, two different sides of, uh, of, of a hot button issue, that kind of thing, like that kind of stormy. I mean, because it's only a five of cups, it's not, you know, uh, but if we're looking at a period of time, there could be a lot of that tension going on there. So uh, to sort of let it go and get over it, and do you know what I mean? The hanged man, to see it differently, maybe more of a spiritual approach here for the Divine Master. Remember, either side here can be the Cancerian, or they 
both could, right? Let's do that that way, if that's better. Okay, well, what do y'all have to help you get what you want? Well, okay, first Major Arcana card down. We've got the witch here, the magician in um, <clears throat> Daughters of the Moon. So the king archetype with the dreams here really does have what they need, the tools necessary to manifest what they want, whether that be, you know, uh, magically, spiritually, through a creative process, bringing anything from the crown chakra down to the root chakra, right? Air, fire, uh, 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 right? Air, fire, water, earth, right? Into form from spirit. Um, yeah, but feeling like what they have is the power of decision to a, cer to a certain extent. They've got the willpower where the Divine Masculine Destroyer over here seems to be in the Two of Flames. To me, very much the indecision card. Well, do I take the quest or not? Should I do that or not? Should I go there or not? And hence, can we just put this on pause for a little bit? Can we just take a little breaky-poo because I'm the Destroyer? because <laughs> I'm dealing with perhaps some destructive stuff, but with this card of abundance on it, I just wonder if that uh, alludes to perhaps a destructive power that is abundant, because that's, tr that's tricky. There's, there's so many different ways to interpret that, and again, that's the thing that's frustrating about doing a general read, is I can see that playing out both positively and negatively, right? But it's all part of the quantum divine field. There you have it. Uh, so, obviously, the, the, the king archetype has the wherewithal here to make stuff happen where the, uh, the destroyer here is really indecisive in where they are right now, but they have that working for them, right? It's giving them time to actually take the handout because they're just not sure, and that actually feels like a benefit. It's like, I don't know if I should destroy this or not, you know? I mean, the shadow side of that, intoxication with destruction, destructive power, destroying others' dreams or potentials, and eventually destroying your own as a result. Like, no one has ever destroyed somebody's dream without it coming back. And that's just like, nee, 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 karma. It's just the pain that makes somebody do that, the shadow that makes somebody do that eventually destroys them. Yeah, it's just how it works. Seen it happen in my own life. Let's, uh, let's see. Uh, what are you guys thinking about this? Well, you're thinking about it if you're the king archetype. Here we got the two of blades, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, the destroyer, however, might be thinking about their options. Now, there is something dreamlike, perhaps, uh, about the, the Seven of Cups. It's been depicted so in so many different tarot decks, but uh, particularly from the Rider Waite, we see those sort of like castles in the sky, right? I was like, oh, I want that, and I dream for that, I dream for that, I dream for that. Um, but I think that fits with this sort of like indecisive not knowing, because they might be really considering uh, their options of what are important to them emotionally, right? Now you got to figure someone with a destroyer archetype. I mean, the light side, uh, releasing what is potentially destructive. In other words, they find what is potentially destructive within themselves in this situation, and they release it in a way where that energy becomes more constructive than destructive. Um, but preparing for new life, sometimes you just need to <laughs> to kind of torch the sucker down. I'm not, you know, I'm not recommending arson, but look at the times that we're in too, right? Destruction is part of the cycle of a creation and destruction. Birth, death, rebirth, round and round and round we go. So, I mean, from a witch's perspective, I get it. Uh, but definitely in this place of not really sure what to do would go really what they could do with the hanged man. So if you're the king on this and you're dealing with the destroyer, let's create some hanged man time here. Uh, what's going on emotionally? This should be intense. Well, well, yes, yes and no. Here we've got the Piscean card here. Uh, the Maiden of Cups, the Mermaid. Mommy Watu, which for Cancerian, again, I feel like this is feeling more the Cancerian because... <laughs> Because the Cancerian, with this kind of Piscean energy in their emotions, perhaps, I, I mean, can weather the storm. I get that part. This is a king archetype, after all. This is not somebody who wavers easily, right? Like, you don't think weakness when you think a king archetype. But someone who nonetheless has the dream. I'm going to say, like, this now changes this card of the Angels of Dreams. Absolutely. Be paying attention to your dreams if you are the... The, the king in this one, the divine feminine in this one, like no joke. Um, and that the emotionality that you're going through, you know, to love what arises, to do the healing work, right? To do your own self-love work and give yourself room to voice to all the emotions without letting the emotions, what? Take you into a place of uh, excessive feelings of entitlement and rulership without restraint, you know? Like a Zeus tantrum. <laughs> 
frying. <laughs> There's a little video game like that I used to have on my phone called Zeus, and you could like zap. Just saying. My kind of fun, I guess. Well, good old dear old dad. Uh, uh, let's let's have a look see doxy though, because I think oh, four of pentacles. Sorry for um for the divine masculine destroyer here though. Perhaps a little like mm hmm mm hmm hmm hmm. <laughs> right? So somebody's holding back a little bit here, emotionally really focusing on their own stability and security, which, I mean, for Destroyer is probably a good idea. I mean, if we're talking about, you know, is the volcano going to erupt or not, let it erupt in the healthiest way that it can for the well-being of all. Good luck with that. What's that going to look like? I don't know. But what is the point of view of the soul? Okay. Okay. I am, let me start with the destroyer here because this is lovely too. But the, the two pentacles, like keep your balance, keep your balance, keep this in balance. That there, what I love about this is that the destroyer archetype does have power here, but they're in this place of indecision and not really revealing their emotions outwardly. Um, probably because what they feel is deep and intense. I mean, a destroyer or a volcano isn't like meh. Right? There's no like meh volcanoes, right? They are explosions. Um, and, you know, an archetype is a reason, a season, or a lifetime. But in a twin flame contract, this sounds like the person's trying to hold it together and do their thing. Even their soul is saying, we're learning how to temper, how to balance this power. In terms particularly of what? Earth, physical action. Two of Pentacles. With the Two of Wands here, and we've got the Two of Blades over there. Because um, what the King archetype has is the Three of Wands, uh, Three of Flames in this deck waiting. Now, Kings don't usually like to wait, but when it comes to loyalty, of really being true to something, uh, that is like the loyalty of the soul, that the ability to what? Not be the toxic king, but the enlightened, benevolent leadership uh, benefiting those in your charge, to be loyal to those. Like, the kings aren't just about, you know, that people being loyal to, loyal to them, it's about them being loyal to the people, the land and the king are one. I mean, did we learn nothing from King Arthur? <laughs> Everybody wants to talk Merlin and Avalon and all that stuff, too. It's like, Land of the King are still one. It's all holographic. It's all just one thing. It's just like Arthurian quantum conversations. What, what can I tell you? Welcome to my world. Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angelo Lyons. All right, so we've got, we've got our, our thing here. I mean, particularly with the loyalty and the Two of Pentacles, the voices like this is... It feels like this isn't over between the two of you, but already this could be just as easily a family, uh, sibling, parent, child, boss, co-worker, right? But it feels like we're dealing with a king archetype and someone who, you know, <laughs> might be ready to torch the house. Let's have a look see Uh We're going to go to the Kuan Yin Oracle. And this is the newest of the oracles that I've brought into my work, and I'm digging it big time. Uh, this is really a Kuan Yin, Chinese Bodhisattva, goddess, depending on who you ask. I'll go for goddess, right? Of, of compassion. Just lovely, lovely, lovely. And I really, really, really like uh, the deck. Now, there's a lot of info in here. Not going to read you everything in here, but I will give you the opening, like, thumbnail sketch of what they're talking about uh, in terms of divination and a prayer, because there's a lot of in between that, but I think that's a, a sane way to do it. And, of course, we can clarify deeper in the extended. The extendeds are cool. You get at least 12 extra cards, and then, I'm gonna, then I clarify whatever feels like it needs to be clarified. Breathe. Now, for me to tune to Kuan Yin in particular, it's just all about that pink smoke, smoke and it is very Barbara Eden. I dream of genie. It just is. Mm, oh, Kuan Yin, please. <laughs> my, my Kuan Yin. Uh, one card in clarity for the Cancerian Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, please. Uh, for this twin flame contract, for this king archetype and this destroyer archetype, what is the message, uh, Kuan Yin, to help them here, that they may see, that they may learn to heal themselves in this twin flame contract? Empress of the Pearl. I got this one. This is the first one that I got. Empress of the Pearl. It's all. Oh, you'll like it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you'll, you'll get. I can extrapolate because I've actually had this one. Uh, card number 10, Empress of the Pearl. Do, do, do. Empress of the Pearl. Oh, teeny tiny itty bitty writing. Uh, you have an inner gift of great value. 
Born of struggle, adversity, and challenge. Storm. <laughs> okay, well, and Hanged Man too. Destroyer. This is a volatile uh, thing here for both of you, because this is now the center lane. This is both of you. This is where you twin each other. Um, in wisdom, you know that suffering can lead to growth, provided we are willing to search for a way to heal through it. Right? So it's like the trauma and the, and the adversity and just the pain and the suffering of life. As long as we get that there is a, heal, a way to heal through this, then we will be better and we will have accumulated wisdom like a pearl. Um, seeing challenges as ways to expand your spiritual light empowers you to focus on the growing light rather than getting caught up in suffering. And we'll get to the prayer in the moment, but this is the metaphor. And I've been using this metaphor for, oh my God, most of my career as a spiritual teacher, which really started back in the early 90s. What is a pearl? A grain of sand gets in the belly of an oyster, a, a tender, sweet thing in your belly, right? It really gets you, and little by little, it gets covered with layers of calcium and minerals and becomes this beautiful jewel, right? That is what wisdom is. So the Empress of the Pearl is the name of, so it's like pray to, call to, uh, the prayer to the Empress of the Pearl, ready? Uh, with beloved Kuan Yin, Empress of the Pearl, as my witness. Oh, here we go. I transform neg negativity into light through compassion. Anything that causes me discomfort, I use to grow my light so it becomes bigger than the discomfort. And I now choose to experience the light of my being and its spiritual growth as more powerful than any irritation or suffering which serves that growth. O Manu Padmi Hum which means praise be the jewel in the center of the lotus, or the jewel of the lotus. Uh, wow, Empress of the Pearl. And I mean, and there you have it. It's saying, you know, as a Cancerian, whatever the irritations are in here, that both of you have been through it, right? You have, there is suffering here on both sides. Uh, as well as most likely then great wisdom and great gifts. It's, it's, it's an interesting Thing. I don't know, who knows if that will be acknowledged between the two of y'all, but let's just keep going because the next one we're going to do is also one of the newer two, and I love these. The Blue Angel Oracle, Archangel Michael Bay. So we really got Kuan Yin, a very, very divine feminine, and Archangel Michael, a very, very divine masculine. So uh, they're all from this one, uh, the Kuan Yin, the Blue Angel Oracle, and uh, the Whispers of Love, all the same company, Blue Angel. They're great. They're great. I like them. Breathe. Oh. <laughs> Archangel Michael is the blue smoke. Mm. There we go. <laughs> Archangel Michael, please, one card in clarity for uh, this King Archetype and this Destroyer Archetype Twin Flame contract, August, September. Uh, 2020 Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, timeless, all of that. Please, Archangel Michael, what is your point of view? How do you say it from the Archangelic realm of the Archangel of Truth, of Will, the Divine Masculine himself, Archangel Michael? Oh, Oromasis, O-R-O-M-A-S-I-S, -S, purification, fire. <gasps> oh, with the Destroyer Archetype. It's lava time! Uh-oh, it's coming. All right. O-R-O-M-A-S-I-S. -S, Oromasis, purification, fire, card number 43. This has less writing, but it's it it turns the party, I will say. Like, whatever. It's like, uh-oh! It's very Mayhem Miller in a card deck. Uh, 43, uh, Oromasis, purification, fire. Uh, many unexpressed thoughts and emotions which have been stored over time remain locked inside of you. Gee, a Cancerian? No, I can't imagine it, really. Oh, gee, with the destroyer archetype on the table? No, not at all. Just lava building up. These include past disappointments, fear and worry, feelings of inadequacy and guilt, nothing serious, just life's remnants uh, of life's experiences, right? Those little bits that you've been turning into pearls. It's like you've got some stuff built up in there, but really, who doesn't? Uh, it's, it's time to release these emotions and to purify your thoughts. You do not need to analyze things and relive the past. 
Well, it depends. I mean, come on. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, well, I am a Virgo. What do you want? Uh, just acknowledge that you have a whole lot of baggage that you would like to clear. Now, I would like to say as Cancerian energy here on the table, it could be empathic, you might be clearing for the collective. In other words, a part of it is yours. You're symbolically resonant, sympathetic, but it comes out empathically as you clear it. Just go check out Mac Con. <laughs> just easier. Uh, uh, then imagine that a brilliant flame of light transforming and purifying your emotional and physical body, right? Feel yourself being cleansed and healed and feel the sense of freedom that comes as a result of this purification. Feel the peace, joy, and love. All right, right? You give it your best shot, but, but here's the, I guess this is the affirmation. I pray for love to guide me down with that, to illuminate my heart and mind so that I may feel the sacred flame of light within my soul. Look, it's purification by fire. So we're definitely, that's an element here. And it is not just um, purification. Fire is the element of transformation. You can't unburn something. So a purification, this is a lot. And with that Empress of the Pearl, if you can transform the suffering, right? but not the easiest thing in the world. But I gotta say, what I like about this destroyer is again, still this this hanged man wanting to see it differently, wanting perhaps even to sacrifice to see things differently for this to heal. Tricky, 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 tricky. Well, we've got two more cards left uh, to do, and then I'll pop up the picture and we'll see uh, all, uh, all of the puzzle pieces together. We're gonna do the Whispers of Love Oracle. Uh, just one card, the higher selves of all involved. So it would really be the both higher selves of e each of the twins. And anyone else involved in this, I mean, we don't have a huge amount of um, court cards here. I mean, we've got the, the Pisces card, and that's really in the emotional field there, and that would make sense for a Cancerian read, that there's a lot. And, and don't forget, there is the empathic piece of this, too. I'm like, it doesn't mean that twins can't empath each other. Of course they can. Um, so a lot of repressed stuff here, and it, that shows it's in the collective unconscious. So not to take it too personally, because it's not all yours, and it's not all each other's. It's... Okay, so the higher selves of all involved. They're just showing me a lot here. Please. One card in clarity for this king archetype and this destroyer archetype in this Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Twin Flame contract, August, September 2020, or Timeless, what you got? Love is all around you. There is love everywhere, all the time. Simply acknowledge this as truth. Well, I'm going to go with saying that if this is a family situation, this can be resolved within once things have exploded. You completely love you, you know. Well, I'm in my family, we always get around to it, no matter how... You know, we may disagree on whatever. It's like we all come back down to it. It's, yeah, I love you. Right, 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 you know? Um, but if this really is... I mean, the thing about that card, Love is All Around You, I've contemplated this card as I have a, a lot of my systems I work with. I mean, Love is All Around You is truth, but that is an indication of such a larger spiritual truth that while in a twin flame contract that can feel like cold comfort, like, well, Love is All Around You, you're like, I'm in a twin flame contract right now. But it does say that there is love here. And remember, just because you're in a twin flame contract doesn't mean that you can't love each other. You just can't give each other the type of love that you want, right? Like unrequited love, twin flame, bam, you're done. That's what it is. The, uh, uh, soulmates are symbiotic and sympathetic, and they're smoother. Or do they always fall into place uh, like a fairy tale? No. There's work involved in both of them, and there are arguments in both of them and disagreements in both of them. The difference is, is Twin Flame, you're learning how to heal yourself on this. So there's something here for the both of you, but individually to say that there are emotions built up inside of you and you have endured a lot of suffering, but that love is all around you. Uh, simply acknowledge this is truth. Like, give that a shot. Because um, I could see where a king and a destroyer might be isolating them themselves, right? Maybe not dealing with each other or life in general. <laughs> One last card. Uh, let's get the Healing Mantra deck card, Matt Kahn, because there's a lot of emotional pain going on here. I mean, yes, I'm glad that the King Archetype has the Witch and the Element of Earth, right? So has the skills, the wherewithal. I understand the Destroyer's got a lot of twos, not really letting on what they're feeling here, but really wanting to just put this on pause. So here we go. The Ascended Masters, please. 
one card in clarity, please, for uh, this king archetype and this destroyer archetype and this Cancerian collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, sign, twin, flame contract. You know, August, September 2020, but timeless, please, because this feels ancient at the same time as very contemporary. So their healing mantra is exploring unity consciousness. Now, like I said, like with this card, love is all around you, that there's, it's it does sort of have that universal yes truth, but could be very, very cold comfort in a twin flame contract uh, or context, I can even say. But I am one eternal light appearing as all is an interesting healing mantra. And I will read this. It's, it's, it's really about seeing the different roles that are being played out archetypally within the quantum that we are a part of and not really separate from. It's tricky. It's a tricky mantra, too. It's a personal favorite. Exploring unity consciousness. I am one eternal life appearing as all. When unity consciousness is explored, you are able to sense a connection that unites all hearts, no matter how unique each person seems to be in unity. There is a will... Did I miss a period there, or is that all one run-on sentence? One more time, please. When unity consciousness is explored, you are able to sense a connection that unites all hearts, no matter how unique each person seems to be. Period. There was one. Sorry, I just didn't see it. In unity, there is a willingness to accept the differences that make each of us unique while embracing the greater cosmic web of interconnectivity throughout all time and space. I, that's a lot, but it's really kind of saying it's being willing to see that we are all one, and you don't have to agree with other people's opinions to be loving, really, is I think what this is boiling down to. Um, in exploring unity consciousness, you are not a person in search of the light. You are the light dressed up as a person along your soul's journey, and that is again, there's a much higher context here. I mean, putting in line with that, that you've both suffered greatly and you both have a lot of emotion inside of you, it, there really is a mirroring here. There really is, if you could, I, I, I just don't think by context of it being a twin flame contract, you can help each other heal, but the healing that you can do for yourselves individually because of each other is huge. It's not that you don't love each other, it's just you can't give each other the love that you want. And it, I, I, I can't not feel that maybe just because it's 2020, there might be a political issue here, and that's why it could be family member, it could be all sorts of different things playing out, but it's really not about all of that. It's about stuff that's been boiling inside of you, probably, I mean, unless this is per somebody like a parent that you've lived with your whole life or something like that. Stuff that's been bur like bubbling under the surface for a really long time, particularly for the divine masculine here. Um, this mantra is ideal for amplifying presence. <laughs> I'm good at that. Grounding your energy and deepening meditation. So that's like really good too. Well, I mean, for whoever's the Cancerian here, if it's really talking about doing the emotional work and deepening meditation and going there, go there. Uh, so let me pop up the picture and we'll see what else comes. Ready? Nice deep breath. <sighs> Magic clap. Because we've got the king archetype here in the divine feminine position, the shadow attribute, excessive feelings of entitlement, rulership without restraint in the shadow, the light attribute, entitled, benevolent, I'm uh, sorry, enlightened, benevolent leadership, benefiting those in your charge. So it's definitely the light king versus the dark king. And remember, this is a divine feminine. So we have with that the angel of dreams, that if this is in their light, then the king would have dreams of leadership, of benefiting people, of wanting to make very king of cups. And that is the cancer in card for me, cardinal water. So, you know, that divine feminine thing of, of really wanting to take a more masculine, approach. I mean, everybody's got masculine and feminine energy balance within them. It's all the Tao. It's all one, really, at the end, the beginning and end of it all, the Alpha and the Omega of it all. Um, but that would make sense that from that place and with those dreams, either nocturnal dreams, which can be seen in the Five of Cups, as well as they know that they are in a storm right now. They are aware emotionally that they would be, you know, they have these dreams, these things that they want to do, but there's a lot of tumult going on, at least in terms of this relationship. But they have that card of the witch and their power of Earth, the magician, to really bring themselves into alignment uh, to to deal with this, to weather this storm, because this storm will pass. It's only a five, right? It's not a major arcana card there. The major arcana card so far, 
for our Divine Feminine King, there is the card of the Witch. And I'm kind of loving that there for her, because she's thinking about it, two blades. She might not have absolutely said, so mo to be just yet, right? You know, clanged the cauldron three times and sealed the spell. Whatever she's got planned in there, she's still thinking about it, going back and forth and back and forth. And that two is certainly reflected in that two of pentacles and two of wands for the uh, divine masculine. We'll get to him, right? So that thinking while feeling deep inside that Piscean vibe there is interesting to me. And a Cancerian, right, reading, there's that Piscean card. I mean, the Cancerian card did not pop out. So that says that there is some sort of 12th house influence here, something more psychic, something more intuitive. Uh, not to say that Cancerians aren't that already, but like I said, both of these can be Cancerians. Only one of them might be Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. But that Pisces, I feel that really strong, almost like sonar under the water empathy, like echoes, right? That really might be feeling, and what, what is, the, it's so funny, what is the Divine Masculine here feeling is the Four of Pentacles, perhaps a little shielded, but what you're both feeling is in that center row, right? That that stuff under the surface, that suffering and that, that built up emotion ready to be purified by fire, if not already. I mean, talk about a twin flame contract, right? They are fiery, they are transformative. So let's look at the Divine Masculine here. We've got the destroyer archetype, you know, really the bad boy. Let's call him, let's call him what it is, right? The shadow attribute, intoxication with destructive power, destroying others' dreams or potentials. Like we can see that in all kinds. We you can a destroyer can have like a grin on their face while they're doing it, destroying others' dreams and potentials. They don't always have to, you know, don't always have to look like Johnny Depp and Crybaby. I don't know why that image came to mind, it just did. Uh, the light attribute, uh, releasing what is potentially destructive, preparing for new life, right? Like a demo crew that comes through and, and cleans stuff out. Like when you're moving and you go through that process of just dismantling what no longer serves. So sort of like a walking tower moment in a, we've all been there, right? Reason, season, or lifetime. But what they want here is the hanged man. Well, with, again, the angel of abundance here, it feels like there could be a financial aspect here. Well, and he does have two uh, pentacle cards there. And the other ones are tricky here. This is very, this whole while twin flames are tricky, right? But what he wants there is the hanged man to kind of see this differently, to hang out, to chill, to step back. So not really ready to blow his cork, at least just yet. Kind of more willing, perhaps, to go the more spiritual route. So I feel like, well, what, is there any other major arcana here? No, it's just the divine feminine king has uh, the witch and the divine masculine destroyer has the hanged man. So I really feel like there is a real... With that exploring unity consciousness and that love is all around you, like no joke, as fluffy as that may sound, that might be the way that these two are able to actually cohabitate, right? I mean, even if they're in a family or whatever situation that they're in, is by really going from a more spiritual place. Though they may not agree on the language of the spirituality, because the king might be that's one more older and established, and the destroyer might just you know, see it purely through, I don't know, the quantum or something that doesn't have as much emotional attachment, because I'm not seeing, well, aside from that seven of cups there, no water here. So, but willing to see it differently, right? There's probably a lot of suffering here, but what he's got right now is the two of wands, that indecisive thing, but that's to his benefit, to really take the time to kind of weigh this out, because there's a there are three twos here between the both of them. So there's a bit of that juggling back and forth with air, uh, with fire and with earth. And it would make sense with that Seven of Cups and his element of uh, thought there, right? Like, what's he thinking about? He's like, well, it could be this, and do I want to do that? Do I? And that's very Cancerian, too. So, you know, not just to say that this destroyer couldn't uh, be a Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign either, this Divine Masculine. Because with that Four of Pentacles, gee, a Cancerian, I... <laughs> Not letting on about how they feel, but feeling everybody's anything every way. Gee, claws and shells. Yeah, I didn't tell you I was raised by one. <laughs> Son of, yeah. But we love them for that, because once you get past that, there's all that yummy, delicious crab meat inside of them. They're very loving, nurturing, warm, snuggly, wuggly people, but they got to protect that, right? I get it. So with that destroyer thing that they might be going through here... It, it would make sense that they're trying to what? Find balance. The, the point of view of the soul is like, this is a time of balance. I need two of pentacles. Get your feet stable beneath you. So if these two are not in immediate communication, it's probably for the best. Uh, but if they are living within the same house, this is tricky. Because it, I, like if I was going to make this 
uh, like a true twin flame contract, I would say, like in, in, uh, <laughs> in mythological terms, we've got the divine feminine Zeus and uh, the divine uh, masculine Aries here, or at least Hephaestus too, the destroyer, so that he can recreate, you know, something new out of it. Just really the element of fire and water here, that that eternal play. Uh, but otherwise, right, what is what is Kuan Yin saying here, the Empress of the Pearl, that yes, there has been a lot of suffering here, but there is light as a result of it, to focus on the light more than the suffering. Uh, this uh, Oromesis card from Archangel Michael, Purification by Fire, that there's just this stuff that has to be burned, but you don't have to analyze it all, but it does need to be felt and released in a healthy purifying way. That doesn't necessarily mean at each other, because love is all around you. There is love everywhere all the time. Simply acknowledge this. So this is also about you giving yourself the love that only you can give you, because it's been with you all along. I mean, geez, another Dorothy uh, of Oz reference, just what we needed. Uh, exploring unity consciousness, though, I think this is the really... Here's the mantra, I am one eternal light, appearing as all, right? Even what is Kuan Yin saying? focus more on the light that the suffering has engendered. I know, easier said than done, but I am one eternal light appearing as all. It could very well be a gateway, whether you are this divine feminine king or this divine masculine destroyer in this twin flame contract. Yeah, whoever you are in this, that's your way through. And that's why if this is parent, this is your way through for both of you. Now, again, it turns out it's going to play itself. Sometimes the king's going to be watching this sometimes. But it would be fun if, like, you know, <laughs> they both watched it at the same time. But yikes. Good luck with that. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Oh, here's the blessing. May the Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed with all that they need in this twin flame contract with this king and this destroyer archetype that they may call upon the Empress of the Pearl to really transform their suffering into something beautiful and wise and, and, and dazzling with light as they are transformed by the fire of truth and, and the purification that they are going through, understanding that love is all around them and exploring that unity consciousness, understanding that they are one eternal light appearing as all that they have their dreams and they have their abundance and that they are able to love themselves and give themselves the healing that only they can give themselves for the well-being of all. So mode it be. And so it is a very, very complex reading, and I'm going to suspect a very, very complex uh, extended reading if you want to jump over to Vimeo. A preview is coming up next. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please do hit the notification bell, comment, blah, blah, blah. I love you guys so much. Um, otherwise... Here comes the thingy. Hail. <laughs> Farewell. And blessed, blessed be. Mwah. Hey, hey, my Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Thank you for jumping over to Vimeo for the extended reading. Uh, literally just did <laughs> the what you just watched to get you here well, a minute or so ago. Just moved the cards around, gave myself a little bit more room to do some clarification here. So uh, I, I'm very, very glad that you came. As we've seen, all right, let's get into it. Um, we're looking at a king archetype and a destroyer archetype and in a family dynamic that's almost, I want to say, classic. Like I said, it's very Zeus and uh, Aries, but that can play itself out. You know, it's, it's also sort of like if you want to go there, and I don't want to make the Cancerian, if you're the king archetype watching this, but it can be a little Archie Bunker meathead, right? Which is an ancient archetype back in the 70s and the, in the 80s. Yeah, the 80s too. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross deck. We're going to get past, present, future for each of these, just to give a little bit of a simple, basic timeline. Uh, if you, because if it's resonating for you, you're here to like watch this, uh, but we're going to cross deck. So where we did the Daughters of the Moon for the Divine Feminine, we're going to take three of the Mythic uh, Tarot. Uh, the Divine Masculine point of view for a past, present, future, we will do the same with the Daughters of the Moon Tarot for the Divine uh, masculine, the destroyer. Ready? So, oh, and then we're going to use, <laughs> then we're going to use the, uh, the Chuck Spizzano love pack to clarify. And those, if you're familiar with my work in, in that deck, half the deck is stocked with, stocked with womp womps. And it's good to know what the womp womp cards are in a twin flame contract. Shall we breathe? Yeah, I am still so very high on that, on that reading that I just did for you, getting these cards on the table is a lot. 
So, my gods, please, one card uh, in clarity. We'll need three, but I'll start uh, for this king archetype. In this, uh, this Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus on Twin Flame Contract with this Destroyer archetype, August, September 2020, or Timeless, please, where has this... Nope. Where has this king archetype been on uh, in this twin flame contract? Right. What's the past? There's one there. Where are they now in this contract? All right. Where are they headed in this contract? Now keep in mind. Oh, close. No cigar, please. My gods, where is this king archetype headed? I get there's there's going to be some some big decisions, it feels like, made, but we'll see how that plays itself out. Let's just get our uh, from the goddesses, the past, present, future, from the divine yin point of view. Because don't you want to know what the divine masculines are, <laughs> are feeling? It's just a puzzle sometimes. I mean, and I'm like, I have a pretty decent balance of masculine feminine energy, I think, right? Breathe. <laughs> For this divine masculine destroyer, please, my god, it's, it's, is there any other kind? That's terrible. I'm kidding. Not really, but yeah. Please, one card in clarity. For uh, the Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, this divine masculine in this one, this destroyer archetype, please, where, my goddesses, where has he been in this contract the past? Where is he now in this contract? That's the one. And where is he headed in this contract? Nope. <laughs> where is he? Send it around again, please, if that's it. Where is he headed in this contract? Good. Did not see. Here we go. Where have you been? Well, the Knight of Swords, Gemini in the past. Now, when you throw a court card in a timeline, it says, yes, there's probably some sort of involvement with someone of a Gemini nature, but more likely it might be a time in the past of one expressing themselves. The Gemini is third house, self-expression, certainly communications going on, but a lot of thoughts, mutable air. So maybe a lot of back and forth, back and forth, a lot of information, maybe not all of it so gospel truth or accurate, so to speak, right? So a, a lot of chitter chatter, a lot of self-expression for sure. And for the divine masculine here, we've got the eight of pentacles, uh, sorry, the seven of pentacles. They're really stepping back and taking time to appraise. And I, like I said, I kind of got in the vibe here with this destroyer archetype. They might know how powerful they are, which is nice, right? And it's trying to kind of stay in balance here by really looking at the situation and saying, Appraisal is about assigning value. Like, do I really want to continue doing this or do I really want to say something about this? And that's just very twin flame. You know, darling, you've got to let me know. Should I stay or should I go? But it's asking.